So you want to grow your money by investing it in the Philippine stock market and gusto mong malaman how exactly it works, how much capital you will need, and how much you can possibly earn. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you what I call the basic tools for the trade. So mahalagang malaman nyo ito, especially if baguhan ka pa lang, because I have seen a lot of people na nalulugi just because they were not aware of these core principles of investing. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some lessons about capital, how much you will need to buy your first stock, and then yung risk reward, which is very important para alam mo kung ano yung pinapasok mo. And finally, some basic strategies, simple yet effective ways of protecting your money and at the same time, building it. And if wala ka pa namang account, so we have previous videos how you can open your trading account. So this is actually the first step for you to invest in Philippine stock market. And the good thing is you can do this online and kahit sa mobile phone, magagawa mo na ito. And second is we have the basic navigation video. So if may account ka na, pwede mong panoorin yan for orientation how to read the information available in your trading account screen. And for other basic lessons, so pwede yung puntahan itong website where I summarize all the basics you need to know as a beginner in the stock market. And for more practical videos, so you can watch our videos in our YouTube channel. Make sure to click the notification bell para you will be updated for every new learning video that I'm gonna share with you guys. So with that said, let's go back to our lesson, tips and tricks, basic tools for the trade. First, imagine meron kang 1K sa kamay mo right now and gusto mo tong ilagay sa stock market, gusto mo tong i-invest. So saan nga ba abot ang 1K mo? So pasok ba itong 1K mo sa investing? And related question to that is how much is the minimum needed capital for one to invest in the Philippine stock market? And para malaman natin yung sagot doon, so we need to check what we call the PSE board lot. So in the Philippine Stock Exchange, we have what is called the PSE board lot table, which essentially gives us information on what we call the lot size of every stock of every company. And what is lot size? So this is just the minimum number of shares that need to be purchased when buying a stock in the main board. And this lot size just depends on the stock price. So may kita nyo dito yung stock price or yung stock price range, for example, from 5 to 9.99. So if that is the price ng stock mo, your lot size is 100. And then itong tick size, so this is just the fluctuation for your price. So from 5, dahil lang tick size niya is 0 0.01, so that means ang fluctuation ng price is 5, 5.01, 5.02, until umabot siya ng 9.99. At that point, mag adjust ngayon yung tick size mo from 0 0.01 to 0 0.02. So mostly yung mga well-known stocks fall in this range na 0 0.5 up to around 1,000 and some even more. So let's take a look at some examples on how this lot size works. So for example, in BPI, yung current price niya as of May 11 is 57 pesos. And if we check at our board lot table, if ang price niya is 57, then that means it falls under this range. And ang lot size niya is 10, which means we can buy a minimum number of shares, which is 10 shares for BPI. So which means we will need 57 pesos times 10 shares, 570 pesos to invest in BPI. So that is buying 10 shares. Now in the case of Jollibee, so ang price ni Jollibee as of May 11 is 136 pesos. And if we look at the PSE board lot table, ang lot size ni Jollibee is also 10, which means we will need around 1,360 pesos to invest in Jollibee. Next example is Meralco. So the price of Meralco is 250 pesos, and therefore ang lot size niya is falls under this range. So ang lot size niya is still 10, which means we need 2,520 pesos to invest in Meralco. So is that all you need? So kung bibili ka ng stocks which I just showed, yung figures na pinakita ko, yun lang ba yung kailangan mo? Well, the answer is actually no. Why? Because we also have to consider yung tinatawag na fees and commissions. So remember, meron tayong service of a broker. So we cannot buy stock na tayo lang. We need to open a trading account. 
And these brokers, they receive commissions from us as their clients for every buy or sell order that is actually made. So, wala namang fees and commissions if hindi nagmatch yung buy and sell order natin. So, these fees and commissions are only applicable kapag nakabili ka or nakabenta ng stocks. So, magkano bang inaabot itong fees and commissions? So, this table summarizes the fees and commissions for every buy and sell order. Again, this is only applicable if yung buy or sell order ay actually nagmatch. So, first, yung commission ni broker which is 0.25% of the gross trade amount. So, itong gross trade amount is just the product ng price ng stock and yung volume na binili mo. Okay, so later on, meron tayong examples. And then, another fee is called the VAT, Value Added Tax, which is 12% of the commission. And then, we have here the Philippine Stock Exchange Transaction Fee or PSE Trans Fee, which is 0.005% of the gross trade amount. So, maliit lang ito. And also, yung SCCP fee or the Securities Clearing Corporation of the Philippines fee, which is 0.01% of the gross trade amount. And meron ding additional fee for selling, which is yung sales tax, which is the gross trade amount. So, ito yung number of shares times price times 0 0.006. And may kita rin natin dito na... May special note that the commission fee has a minimum charge of 20 pesos per transaction. So meaning to say, if kinumpute natin yung commission using this formula at hindi siya umabot ng 20 pesos, then ang magiging commission mo will still be 20 pesos. So that will be our minimum commission. So let's look at an actual example. For example, you want to buy 20,000 shares of Ayala Land and ang sample price ni Ayala Land is 5 pesos per share. So, sundan lang natin yung formula. So, commission is 0.25% of the gross trade amount. So, that is 0.25 times the gross trade amount, which is just the product of the volume, 20,000, and the price, 5 peso per share. So, pag yan, that is 250 pesos. Then, VAT, 12% of the commission. So, 12% of 250, so that is 30 pesos. Then the PSE trans fee is 0.005% of the gross trade amount, so that is 5 pesos. The SECP fee is 0.01% of the gross trade amount, so that is 10 pesos. So pag kinuha natin yung total, that is 295 pesos. Now, what if binenta naman natin si Ayala Land, yung 20,000 shares at 5 pesos and 20 cents per share? So, here's what happens. So, yung commission, yung VAT, PSC trans fee, and SCCP fee will follow the same formula. Pero nagbago lang yung gross trade amount. So, that is 20,000 times 5.20. So, this is our gross trade amount. If you get the 0.25%, yun yung magiging commission. And same formula applies doon sa tatlo. And then, meron tayong additional expense, which is yung sales tax. That is 0.006 of the gross trade amount, so that is 624 pesos. So, ang total fees for selling, therefore, is 930 pesos. So, essentially, ganito yung nangyari, no? You buy 20,000 shares at 5 pesos per share. Ang gross trade amount is just the product of the two numbers. And then, yung net amount is 100,000 pesos. That is the gross amount plus all the fees. That is 100,295 pesos. Now, pag binenta mo naman siya, so assuming umakyat yung presyo, which means tumubo ka, so ang gross trade amount of your selling transaction is 104,000, but meron kang additional fees, so ibabawas natin ngayon yun, that will give us 103,069 pesos. Which means ang net gain of this buy and sell transaction is just the difference of the two, which is 2,774 pesos and 20 centavos. So, mapapansin nyo, masyado itong malaki. Ang capital niya is actually 100,000 pesos. So, let's take at a case for newbies. So, this is actually a transactions that I made. So, I bought 200 shares of Metro Bank at 37 pesos and 70 cents per share. So, ito yung magiging computation niya. Ang gross trade amount is 7540 and pag kinumpit natin yung fees, that is around 23 pesos and 53 cents. So giving us this net amount na 7563.53. So si COL Financial will actually send you an email for every successful trade that you have. 
So this gives us the breakdown of the costs of the trade. So yung, again, yung total amount is 7,563.53 pesos. Now, what happens if binenta mo naman siya? Assuming na binenta mo siya at a lower price, so 36.9 compared dun sa 37.7, meaning nalugi ito actually. So ang gross amount mo is 7,380 and Meron kang fees which amounted to 67 pesos and 79. So ito lang actually yung net na marireceive mo. In this case, meron kang net loss of 251 pesos and 32 cents. So meron ako actually yung ginagamit na computation tool na ginawa ko years ago para masimulate itong fees in buying and selling stocks. So let's open it and makikita natin that we can get a lot of insights using this computation file. So ito yung ginawa kong PSA computation file where you can simulate all the fees and commissions you can incur in buying and selling stocks. So I place here yung example na binigay ko kanina. So I bought for example 20,000 shares of Ayala Land at a buying price of 5 pesos per share. And may kita mo dito ngayon yung breakdown ng gross amount and all the commissions. So, kailangan mo lang i-enter yung volume and price and may kita mo na yung breakdown ng all expenses, your total buying charges, and your total cost. And then, pwede mo rin ilagay dito yung iyong projected selling price para makita mo yung potential profit more potential loss. So, if I put 5.20, so meron tayo ditong gross amount, and meron ditong commission, VAT, SECP, and PSE fee. And then dito may net gain or profit and percent profits. And maganda dito is pwede mong laro-laroin para makita mo yung potential gain or potential loss at different target selling prices. So in this case, pwede kong ilagay dito limbawa magkano magiging potential profit or loss if binenta ko siya ng mas mababa. So automatically nag-a-adjust siya. So this is very practical tool para ma-imagine mo and makita mo magkano ba yung pwede mong kitain and magkano din yung pwede mong malugi. So you can get a free copy of this computation tool by going to this website, smartpinainvestor.com slash calculator and you can easily download yung free copy of this computational tool. And then, meron tayo ditong magic number which is negative 1.19%. So ano ba itong negative 1.19%? Well, ito yung magiging percentage loss mo if you buy and sell stock at exactly the same price. So in other words, pag bilhin mo pa lang ng stock, hindi pa bumababa yung presyo ng stocks mo, is lugi ka na because of all the trading fees and commissions. And that means also na your stock has to appreciate at least 1.2% pataas para magkaroon ka na ng gain. Another insight we can have using the computation tool is what we call the 8K rule. So ano ba itong 8K rule na ito? So let's imagine you're a new investor and you have more than 8,000 pesos right now and you want to buy shares of Jollibee. So let's say you made an order to buy 10 shares of Jollibee at current price na 135 pesos per share. So ito yung magiging transaction amount mo. So gross amount is 1,350 and plus all the fees and commissions, so ang net amount mo will be 1,372 pesos and 60 cents. And let's say you want to have 60 shares of Jollibee. So you do this 6 times. And if you do it 6 times, then that means you will have a total cost of 6 times this amount, which is 8,235 pesos and 60 cents for a total of 60 shares of Jollibee. So let's compare it if you bought the entire 60 shares in one buy order. So buy 60 shares of Jollibee at the same price. So the same volume, the same price, so ang gross amount mo is 60 times 135 and ang net amount mo is 8,123 pesos. So ano yung napansin mo? Yung net amount mo using just one by order is mas maliit compared dun sa total amount mo nung bumili ka ng pakonti-konti. So ito yung effect ng commissions and fees when it comes to buying and trading and we can easily see it no pag ginamit natin yung computation tool. So back to the computation tool, for example, you bought 10 shares at 135 pesos per share. So ang magiging total cost mo is 1,372 pesos and 60 cents. So pag inulit mo yan, 
So let's say 10 and then 135. This is your second order na 10 shares. And then same thing. Ayan, so ito essentially yung 6 buy orders mo na 10 shares each and 135 pesos per share na price ni Jollibee. So kung mapapansin mo, every buy order... Ang commission mo is 20 pesos because that is the minimum commission fee. Whereas, pag kinumpare natin na instead of 6 na 10 shares, gagawin lang nating 60 shares automatically and at exactly the same price. So, ang magiging commission mo is almost the same, no? 20 pesos and 25. Whereas, dun sa anim na buy orders mo, ang commission mo na kagad is 120 pesos. So, by following yung 8K rule na tinatawag na ma-maximize natin yung 20 pesos na broker's commission. So, yun lang actually yung idea nung 8K rule. So, again, this 8K rule is just a guide. If you want to maximize the fees, then make sure to make your transactions worth at least 8,000 pesos para sulit yung broker's commission fee. Now that we discussed the capital and fees, let's proceed to another factor that will have a significant impact on your performance, which is time. So first question is, when is our Philippine stock market open? So when we say open, so parang regular market lang, no? you have open hours and then meron din closing hours. So this is the Philippine stock market. So in the Philippines, every trading day, which means Monday to Friday except banking holidays, our market is open from 9.30 a.m. up to 3.30 p.m. And then, meron lang tayong market recess ng tanghali from 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. So, during this market open or trading hours na tinatawag, constantly nagpa-fluctuate every second, every minute ang price ng stock. And at 9.30 a.m., dahil yun yung start ng opening time mo, so you have the opening price ng stock. And at 3.30 p.m., you will have your closing price for the stock. So sa mga news and sa mga jalyo na nakikita nyo, when you hear or read the news that the market or the stock close at some level, so it means yun yung price ng stock or the market when it close at 3.30 p.m. But it doesn't give you information on how high and how low yung na-attain ng market or ng stock. And then, the next trading day, pwede mag-open yung stock in an opening price different from the previous closing price. So, depende na yun sa prevailing demand and supply ng stock. So, paano ngayon if empleyado ka and you don't have the luxury of time to monitor yung galawa ng pressure ng stock during the market open? Well, pwede ka pa rin namang mag-invest and mag-place ng buy and sell order by using yung tiyatawag na off-hours facility ng broker mo. So with off-hours order, you can enter your orders after closing in preparation for the next trading day. And if you will notice, may tinatawag na term which is ATO or ATC. So ibig sabihin at the opening and at the close. Which means if you will place an order using this facility, so you just have to select whether you will buy or sell. And then lalagay mo yung stock code and yung volume mo or number of shares. Now, ang question is, anong price yung gagamitin dun sa order mo? So, yun nga yun yung gamit nitong term, ATO or ATC, which means ang price na gagamitin is yung opening price ng stock or yung closing price ng stock respectively. Again, this is at the open and at the close. So, I would suggest that if you use this, so choose at the close kasi mas less volatile yung galaw ng price during this phase. And if talagang limited time ka to monitor, then just use this option and stick with blue chips kasi nga, hindi mo naman monitor and less volatile yung galaw ng presyo ng stock. Another option is to invest in mutual fund because in that case, wala ka naman din talagang kailangan ng gawin. Maglalagay ka lang ng investment funds mo and then bahala na si fund manager na paggalawin and palakihin yung investment mo. So you can watch our previous video how to find the best performing mutual fund in case you want to consider this option. Now that we already discussed the requirements, which is yung money and your time, so magkano naman ang potential loss and profit na pwede mong makuha sa stock market? So question na madalas kong nare-receive is how much is the guaranteed profit sa stock market? And the quick answer is, well, there's really no such thing as guaranteed profit in the stock market. And wala rin sure strategy na pwede kang kumita and pwede kang malugi. Everything will depend sa market conditions. 
And for us to demonstrate it, so let's take a look at Jollibee. So dito, we can see yung historical price ni Jollibee from June 2013 up to May 2020. So makikita natin, nag-peak siya nung early 2019, pero later on, nag-crash siya come 2020. And if you calculate it, umakit siya actually ng 142%. So that is from June 2013 up to early 2019. So that is more than 5 years. But after that, ano, nag-crash siya from that peak up to now. That is 53.9% down. So anong point ko dito? So if this huge fluctuation, no, up and down can happen to a big company like Jollibee, which is already a blue chip, na tinatawag. So, this can also happen to other stocks na mas volatile pa actually. So, we can say na somehow, you need to monitor it, yung investment mo, kahit once a week man lang, no? Para naman, aware ka sa nangyayari sa kanya and you can, what we call, lock in your gains and avoid having huge losses. And speaking of losses, so, meron akong table na sinare dito. So, in this table, I show the percent gain na dapat matin nung isang stock to break even from a previous loss. So for example, ang presyo or bumaba yung investment mo ng 5%, so para makabawi ka or makabalik yung investment mo at the same level, you need to have a percent gain yung stock mo ng 5.3%. If nalugi ka ng 10%, so para makabawi ka, dapat yung stock mo umakyat ng 11.1%. If malugi ka ng 25%, so dapat yung stock mo is umakyat ng 33.3% para ka lang makapag-break events. If mapapansin mo, habang palaki ng palaki yung loss mo sa isang position, sa isang stock, mas malaki yung kailangan niyang iakyat para lang makabawi ka. So what can we learn from this? Well, we need to protect yourself against big losses. So that's why you need to monitor it also from time to time. And this becomes more and more important as you increase your investment amount or kapag matagal ka nang nag invest at marami ka nang nalagay na pera dun sa investment account mo. So make sure to adjust your exposure sa stock market through time lalo na kung matagal ka na talagang nag invest And for us to maximize yung ating profit and minimize the potential loss, so we have to learn basic simple strategies that can help us do this. So now let's go to our topic on strategy. So this is actually a huge topic but here I'll just share very basic principles na talagang makakatulong sa inyo. And when we talk about strategy, we're actually dealing with portfolio management. So hindi lang pala enough yung magaling kang pumili which is stock to buy and sell but you also need to learn at this early point na nagsisimula ka pa lang yung tinatawag na proper portfolio management. And related to that is yung tinatawag na stock allocation. So think about it, no? if you divide your portfolio in three, so let's say you bought three stocks. So if you are down in one stock ng 9%, dahil one-third lang siya ng portfolio mo, so that means you are down 3% only in your overall portfolio. And if you are down 15% on one stock, so you are down only 5% on your overall portfolio. So mapapansin nyo, in this way, by proper stock allocation, you're already somehow protected from huge market drops. So mahalaga na di ka all-in na tinatawag sa isang stock kasi isang mali mo at matsyempohan ka na bumaba yung market, pwedeng ma-wipe out, pwedeng maubos yung account mo. And related to this is yung tinatawag na position sizing. Let's say nakapili ka na ng 3 to 4 stocks na bibilhin mo, the principle or the lesson on position sizing tells you how many shares you can buy to have protection for your capital. So you can watch our future video about position sizing. But for now, let's go to another tip which is what we call the core satellite strategy. So ano ba itong core satellite strategy? Basically, you have a core passive position, let's say an index mutual fund, and meron kang stock picks, which is what we call satellites. So these are essentially high conviction stocks na sa tingin mo, you have market intelligence no, or you have this feeling that this stock will perform really well. So yung core position mo, you can invest it in an index fund. So that's why it's a passive core position. And in my next video, I will discuss what is an index fund and how it can help you. But essentially, 
An index fund is a mutual fund investing in the PSE index. And the index is just a basket of the 30 biggest and actively traded stocks in the Philippine stock market. The good thing is you can do this core satellite strategy kay Call Financial or even kay First Metrosec because they offer both stocks and mutual fund in the same platform. So how do you do this? So let's say you do 50, 30, 20, so which means 50% ng capital na nilalagay mo, for example, every month is gagamitin mo to buy mutual fund na index fund. And then 30% dun sa stock pick 1 and then another 20% on stock pick 2. Of course, you can also adjust it, let's say 60% doon sa core position mo and then 20-20 doon sa stock pick. So, bahala ka na doon. So, ano ngayon yung benefit when you do this core satellite strategy? So, number one, you minimize the cost and the tax kasi nga passive fund siya and walang masyadong buy and sell na nangyayari as compared to actively managed funds. Nababawasan ngayon yung costs na pinakita ko kanina, di ba? Bawat buy and sell kasi meron siyang fees and commissions. Second is yung reduced volatility. Dahil nga you have diversified index, so hindi malaki yung talon ng presyo because these are the biggest companies we have in the Philippine stock market. And third, you have the opportunity to outperform the index using your satellites or your actively managed stock picks. And finally, so this is perfect no, for anyone or for beginners who want to be more active in their investing later on. So with this strategy, you can learn a lot about stock picking and trading, yet at the same time, hindi ka too exposed sa potential losses because bulk of your capital is invested in passive core positions. Okay? So yun actually yung benefit itong core satellite strategy. Very simple yet very practical. So yun actually yung lessons that I can share with you coming from my 10 years of experience of investing in the Philippine stock market. So this is just parang tip of the iceberg lang, no? Lesson about capital, the risk reward, and basic strategies. These are very basic yet very practical that you can apply right away even as a new investor in the Philippine stock market. So I hope nakatulong ito and if you like this video, so make sure to also watch yung part 1 nito, how you can maximize the use of your broker's platform, pati na rin yung resources that you can get from it. And also, don't forget to like this video. And if you have questions, so you can leave them in the comments below. Make sure also to subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell, so you get notified for our future upload. So thank you guys for watching, and see you in our next video. God bless us all. Bye!